Hello, I'm Jyotika. Welcome to Excelling Psychology. In today's class, I will start solving a past paper. This is the May June 2022 paper, variant 2 for your AS levels, 11th grade, CIE Psychology 9990. You can visit my site alevels.excellingpsychology.com. I'll link it in the description box below. If you want notes for your course studies and some model answers to go through, they are available on my site. I will solve this past paper completely, but I will not be able to finish it in one video. So I will put up parts of this lesson. So do look out for upcoming parts. As and when I make the parts, I will keep on linking them to the description box below. Uh, I will solve this paper by orienting you towards how you should think about every answer. So before I write down an answer, I will suggest to you how you should think about it. But of course, I will not be able to elaborate too much on every answer that we are going to write. So if you want more detailed lessons, there are some uh, on my YouTube channel. So you can visit the playlist that I have linked in the description box below. And of course, again, you can visit my website for more detailed lessons. Okay, so let's begin. We'll start off with section A, of course, and all questions need to be answered in this section. You cannot skip or pick and choose from these questions. Okay, the first question asked to us is, state what is meant by reliability. This is a very straightforward question whenever they tell you to state something. So, when the command term is state and the answer is just for one mark, it is very clear that you just have to give a simple definition of whatever has been asked. So this is a descriptive question that to a very simple one. So whatever you have learnt about reliability, whatever definition you remember of it, you have to present simply that for this answer. Okay, I'm sure you've learnt something about reliability in terms of uh, having uh, the same procedure or the standardized procedure for every participant or simply as a, as consistency of uh, a procedure followed or consistency of results. So those are the terms in which my, you might have learned about it. So whatever you have learned, you can present here. I'm presenting a simple definition of reliability here. So I would say that reliability is... the consistency of the procedure followed in a research study. And I'll underline the main term which is explaining reliability so that the examiner has ease in uh, reading through my answer quickly. Of course, examiners have to go through a lot of answers so we can be a little empathic towards them. Okay, the next question is explain the difference between qualitative data and quantitative data. You are asked to explain here. Okay, so you have to go beyond just stating. You can see the space given is also more for writing the answer, which suggests to you that you are expected to elaborate a little. Okay, so little elaboration is required here. In a state type of command term, you could just mention something. But in explain command term, you have to actually give some reasoning. Okay, also you can see uh, that it is for two marks. It's a two mark question. And uh, two terms have been outlined in the question, both of which you have to explain. Make sure you dedicate equal coverage to both of these. So write uh, clearly about qualitative data as well as quantitative. Some students have this tendency of focusing too much on one and then they either run out of space or time falls short and so they don't cover the other one equally. If two terms are mentioned and two marks are allotted, uh, you can uh, take it as the marks are equally distributed between both the terms. Okay, before we write the answer, 
what do you remember about uh, qualitative data again depending on how you have learned it qualitative data refers to data which is non numerical right it's generally verbal so the kind of uh, data we get through our interviews uh, surveys if there are open questions on those or observations the transcripts that we do of what we have observed uh, from those sources we get qualitative data because it is verbal or it is in words okay what about quantitative data it is numerical so when we have measured something in terms of numbers the data we have collected for our study is in terms of numbers we call that type of data qualitative now what they have asked us is the difference between the two okay and we have to explain what this difference is okay clearly the difference is that qualitative is non numerical and it's not at all in numbers whereas quantitative is the opposite it is in numbers and it's not at all verbal okay so keeping all of this in mind let us write one answer i'll give you this these all are sample or model answers of course you could write in your own words okay uh, so i'll begin with qualitative uh, again one more thing good practice is that whatever has been mentioned first discuss that first so qualitative data is mentioned first try to maintain that order quantitative is mentioned second so put that later as far as possible okay so i would begin with qualitative data is the type of information collected in research which is in words it is not numerical i could say it is not in numbers in contrast so this is how i'm explaining i'm drawing a comparison i'm showing my reasoning how i'm comparing quantitative with qualitative and presenting it so this is how we explain something in contrast quantitative data is information collected in numbers it is not collected in words Okay, my handwriting is a little big, which I have kept so that you can see clearly. Your handwriting may be smaller. You don't have to fill in the whole space. There are no fixed number of sentences you have to write. As long as your answer is correct, it is addressing what is asked in the question. Don't bother about how much space it's taking or how many total words you have. Okay, now the past two questions were really simple to answer. We look at a. now a more typical paper 2 type of question which requires our uh, knowledge of research methods to be used okay so when we read these type of questions we should not just read them on face value we should keep translating them in our minds as we read i'll show you what i mean by this Schachter and Singer two factors in emotion study was a laboratory experiment the participants in the study were all male a new experiment could explore gender differences in the effect of epinephrine however the stooge may influence emotions differently in males and females when i'm reading this what comes to my mind immediately is confounding or influence of extraneous variables uncontrolled variables okay so if you've done your extraneous variables lesson well you will immediately be able to catch this influence of extraneous variables the extraneous variable name here is gender they want us to consider how gender could confound the results okay let's read further suggest how a difference between the influence of the stooge on males and females could affect the results about gender differences in the effect of epinephrine 
simply how gender could act as a confound that is what you have to suggest the this command term which is this suggest clearly it indicates that you are not being asked a simple type of definition like we saw in the past two questions you are being asked to go beyond that you are being asked to apply your personal reasoning there are multiple answers possible to this question depending on how you reason out here i'll give you the simplest and the most likely answer that will come to your mind you have studied uh, bandura study this year that, that's part of your syllabus uh, so here you can see how cleverly the person who has said this question the teacher has really um is really making you think uh, in terms of you know how you can uh, correlate what you learn in one study with what you've learned in another study she's helping you to connect your knowledge here okay in bandura study you have learned that females are socialized to be less aggressive and that's what bandura found in his study that the female uh, children were the girls were less aggressive overall than boys they were more aggressive right so whenever we consider gender as a confound with anything that has to do with emotions especially the emotion of anger we have to know that males and females respond differently this is what we've learned in bandura's study so females tend to be less aggressive and in shakter and singer's study we know that one of the emotions uh, which was played out by the stooge was that of aggression of anger so what we can expect is that gender would influence results in this way that is females would be less aggressive than males because of that what would happen is epinephrine would not have that much of an effect on females as much as it would have on males so that is how we have to think okay now how to answer the question we we've got a line of thinking now we've understood what they're asking us and we have an answer ready always pick up the wording of the answer from the question itself now when they're asking suggest how a difference between influence of stooge in males and females so first explain what difference you are suggesting okay here we are suggesting the difference in aggression so first we will specify that could affect the results so first we'll point out the difference next we'll show how it affects the results answer writing is not difficult just follow the lead that the question is giving you okay so how i'll answer this is since females are socialized to be less aggressive than males okay what have i done till here i've spoken about the difference part which they have asked me whatever i'm writing in purple is just for understanding what i'm writing in blue is the final answer okay so first i've pointed out the difference females are socialized to be less aggressive than males i'll complete this they can be expected to experience less anger under the influence of the stooge now next what we have to suggest is how this would influence results so my next sentence will be about affecting the results so what would happen because of this it would appear that females are less influenced by epinephrine that is it would appear as if epinephrine is ineffective when it comes to arousing the emotions of females whereas it's not epinephrine which is ineffective it is females a uh, natural uh, tendency towards less aggression or socialized tendency towards less aggression that is impacting them so what i will write is this would cause females to appear
less influenced by the injection of epinephrine thereby confounding results okay or you could write making results less valid so in this next sentence i have pointed out to the results so what exactly would happen to the results female would appear less influenced by epinephrine okay when you write like this when you follow the lead of the question in writing the answer not only do you uh pick up pick on the correct format for writing your answer you also make sure you answer completely otherwise students just tend to answer one part of the question and not the other so that shouldn't be the case again whatever are your main points you could underline them for uh, making the answer more prominent to the examiner so what we've written is females are socialized to be less aggressive we could just underline that part and because of this what will happen females will appear less influenced that is the impact on the results so whatever keywords are there i'm just underlining those okay let's move on to the next question now it's on the next page okay they're continuing with the shakter and singer study let's see what else they're asking us a second new experiment could include a stooge who claims to feel ill because of the injection Okay, so they would want to include a new stooge, and uh, he suggests that he is feeling ill rather than expressing any emotion. Suggest how one participant variable could affect the results of this second new experiment. Participant variable. What's a participant variable? Something that is within participants. What we call individual differences. So an extraneous variable. or a confounding variable that is coming from within participants gender was also a participant variable okay now let's consider the scenario they have given us again see if a stooge pretends to be ill we'll have to connect this with what we already know about shakter and singer study why they made the stooge act ang angry or happy in their original study because they thought participants would start experiencing the same emotion now if a researcher is replicating that study and making the stooge pretend as if he's ill what is he expecting he's expecting that participants will also start to feel ill when they look at the stooge Okay so first be clear on what the experiment is trying to do over here always for any question understand the purpose of conducting the study first so here the experimenter's desire is to make participants feel ill okay that's why he is asking the stooge to enact uh, illness now if imagine visualize this scene in your mind the participant is uh, say the stooge is pretending to be ill and the participant is watching the stooge if he reports that now he is also feeling ill because the stooge is behaving that way what could be another reason instead of it being the stooge that has impacted the participant what could be some factor this is what you need to ask yourself some factor within the participant that is causing him to feel ill when do people feel ill when they anyways they are ill no before they have come for the experiment only they are feeling ill okay so uh, some participants as it is might not be feeling well or because of the epinephrine injection besides their emotions their physical wellness might have been affected by like some people if they are sensitive to injections or they've got worried because of uh, being you know given an injection that's caused them to become anxious so they might already be feeling that way so again this is a question of confounding rather than the stooge making them ill it might be their own physical state which is causing them to be ill so we have to write the answer in a similar way that we wrote the previous one so one participant variable 
that's the first thing we need to write down in the answer we'll mention which is the participant variable outline it very clearly secondly we will mention how it could affect the result so make sure we cover everything that's asked okay let's begin with one participant variable could be how ill or well a participant is naturally feeling at the time of the experiment Okay, so that answers the first part. Second, I'll answer how this could affect the results. So again, it's about confounding. This could affect results. As it would appear. That participants are being influenced. by the behavior of the stooge whereas in reality their own state is making them feel ill this would confound results or you could say make them less valid okay now very quickly let's come to the next question it's a simpler one explain one ethical problem with this second new experiment clearly it has to do with illness and if you've done your ethics well you know anything with regard to illness always uh, contradicts the ethical guideline of protection from harm so i'll uh, answer has to be in those lines only suggestion i can give whenever it comes to ethical problems is uh, make sure you name the ethical guideline most students don't name the ethical guideline when i tell them to write the answers for the first time that time uh, they clearly don't mention it and i have to correct them there what they do is uh, they explain harm and all in their own words they explain but they just don't you know label out this guideline which they should okay here definitely if you are causing participants to feel ill which type of harm are we, are we uh, making them undergo is it physical or psychological it's the physical one because here the stooge is pretending to feel ill at a physical level okay so we can say that the participants are not being protected from physical harm so that's the guideline being violated this is a simple one okay and of course we have to make uh, the results uh, relevant through the scenario given okay because it's an explain answer they have not asked us to just name the ethical problem otherwise we would have just written protection from harm or they have not asked us to just state the guideline which has been broken it is an explain command term so we'll answer accordingly and it's for two marks okay so let's write this what we should do is um this is my way of writing again it's a model answer you could write it differently but the order i would suggest is one ethical problem is violation of or you could say breaking of the guideline of protection from harm okay so in my opinion you should state it right away get your one mark right here when you have clearly named the guideline which is broken next link it so in the next sentence i link it first is naming next is linking so how i link this 
this is because I'm explaining. So this is because participants are being deliberately made to feel ill in this new experiment. Okay, so that completes. It's been really simple. It's got uh, what we've answered in this uh, 3A and B has got all to do with confounding and uh, protection from harm. Next question is from the Baron Cohen eyes test, but I'll stop this part here. It's becoming lengthy. I'll uh, come back with this part soon and whenever I do, I'll link it in the description box. So in the next part, we are going to be continuing with question 4 of the same paper. Thank you for watching.